and then you can. Hello. Now, I'm Janet Christensen O'Brien, and today I'd like to talk to you about devil drugs. They're a very serious matter because it's killing, it's killing all sorts of people. It's not just our youth. It's not just our teenagers. It's not just our 50 and 60 year olds. It's just killing us all. And what the drug does to us is it makes you like a zombie and it just freezes your mind. It kills your soul. And I also wanted to say that uh, in Seattle, there is hope. There's hope for uh, the homeless. I was walking down the street today from my office in Pioneer Building and I saw this little backpack full of coats and I saw this little plastic container with a, a, a blanket in it and it was sitting outside of this tent. And so in Seattle, we do really care. We care about, we care about the homeless, we care about the drug overdose, uh, we care about the violence, we care about the gangs. You know, this is my TV show and I'm Seattle detect, uh, Seattle, uh, well, I'm at Seattle Community College. I'm sorry, I'm confused because I'm also a private detective and my company is Seattle Detective Bureau. Yes, I do do interviews of the homeless. I do do interviews of drug activity for uh, different cases that I might be working on. Uh, but I also do TV shows. I'm here at the TV station right here. Public uh, interest issue show is my show. Now, I'm going to get up and I'm going to walk around. I'm going to show you the facilities here. And I'm going to take my little note with me so I can talk to you a little more. Now I'm getting up, I'm going to do my little twirl. See, these are the cameras right here. The cameras. When you come into my show, you sit right down there at the desk. And you talk to me about what it is you want to tell me. These are the cameras, they're all set. And then, you know, I like to twirl before I go on the air. That just kind of relaxes me, that gets me in the mood to talk to you. Now. Today the commentary is about devil drugs. Now devil drugs are very, very serious. I saw these uh, in the Caribbean about 20 years ago, 96, 97, 98. And in the Caribbean what happened is these drugs, people would take them, the tourists would come down there and they'd take them and it would totally absorb their mind. Uh, you'd see these uh, 20, 30 year olds, they'd be sitting down, right in, in St. Croix we have these gigantic flower pots in the middle of the downtown where there's a wharf and there's a seaplane, it's very beautific, the plane comes in and there's a charter boat that goes over to St. Thomas and it's a very beautific, you have a one coffee shop and you have a frozen food and it's in a refrigerated section with just a plastic covering it. We don't have the doors on a plastic container, but the thing is, the drugs were there. Uh, you would see these people, they're just sitting around, sitting next to a flower pot, and their mind was gone. They'd like walk around a little half a block radius, and they would not be able to function. And I see the same kind of thing here. Now it took 20 years for that same kind of drug to get here. And now people are mixing it up by all sorts of things. They're just kind of, it's a homemade industry. This uh, devil drug is a homemade industry. It's really shocking. It's really scary. Uh, I've interviewed a few people about it and they all say that people who go on it it's like their mind freezes and they they become like zombies. They can no longer function and they are living in tents and they're losing weight and they're just drifting around. And it's a very, very scary thing. I don't know what we can do about this. I don't know how we're going to stop it. I don't know where it's coming from, but the new devil drug is killing people. It is killing you. Uh, do not uh, try it as a homemade remedy. It is killing people. And the thing is, my show is about different topics. Uh, right now, I've had a lot of people call me up on my TV uh, show and ask me to do a segment on drugs. Um, I've interviewed a lot of people about, about devil drugs, 
and you just have to leave the buildings in downtown Pioneer Square and in near Nordstrom's uh, Westlake Center and all over the areas. You just have to, and in the U District, you just have to walk around there and look and see all these people just sleeping around. Uh, they're, some of them are just homeless. Some of them, you, you could be one paycheck away not to have drugs, but to just be homeless. You know, this new economy is really hard economy. It's hard to find work. It's hard to find jobs. It, it's, we have to have some kind of resource for people that are okay, but they're almost not gonna make it. You know, the Compass Center is where people can go, they can take a shower, they can check in, they can check their mail. Uh, the homeless shelters, they can do that. But we have to have something uh, for people who are just kind of struggling to get by. They're not really making a living. Uh, the home, you know, the food banks are okay. That helps them a little, but we've got to help them with their integrity. We've got to find some kind of way so that not just the people out on the street, not just the people living in their cars, not just the homeless, but the people who are the low income wage earner that are just not scraping by. We've got to have some kind of fund in Seattle that like a food bank that people can go in and get cash. You know, if you need like some groceries, you can go to a food bank. And if you need like $50 for the week, you can go into another resource center. You know, if you need a shower, you go into a different resource center. And, and we need to have these kind of resources. We need to have different community activities because Seattle cares. Seattle, we care about you. Uh, we have all sorts of people during the holiday that come around and make sure that people are eating. They hand out sandwiches to the homeless. They do all sorts of different things. But we have to do the same kind of thing every day of the week to find out if everybody's okay. Now my show, I'm comfortable. I'm here at Seattle Community Media. This is a wonderful studio. See, there's lights, there's tables, there's chairs, there's desks, there's all sorts of things for you. And if you want to, if you have a cause, you can come in here to Seattle Community Media and you can do the same thing. It isn't much. It's like $35 a month, a year, $35 a year or $65 a year to come in here, be your own producer, get your own show on the air. Now, I wanna bring you back over uh, to the place where I sit and put on the show. Now, now this is very important for you to follow me over here. And um, I just wanna say that there's a lot of topics of interest. Now, one of the topics of interest is Fran Grady Jahuli. Uh, there was a case in Florida, in Orlando, Florida, where this woman uh, who was a guardian had uh, nine vials of cremated remains in her office. And all of the remains were um, unidentified. And she, about four weeks ago, she find, that woman uh, just got arrested and Fran Grady Jahuli has been trying to find out if any of the remains are one of, of her son. And uh, there's a reporter down there um, who is with uh, ABC Orlando. And he's also, his name is Adam Washer. And uh, he is also looking into Fran's situation. Uh, now the, the case has kind of expanded and uh, we're hoping to have uh, the Florida Attorney General, who is a woman, she just got elected, and uh, she seems to be uh, pretty thorough in her investigations. And we're trying to have her kind of pay attention to this guardianship in Florida. And uh, we also want to find Brad, who is Fran's son. And the thing is, is that different people call me from time to time, and different people tell me about different cases that they want to be brought on the air. Uh, there's all sorts of guardianship cases. I got a call the other day and a man told me that they were doing a lot of building on Arthur Hayes' property at Hayes LLC down on the waterfront on Western Avenue and Alaska Way and all that uh, waterfront property near the, uh, the highway over, you know, the Magnolia Bridge. 
And uh, they wanted me to look into that, uh, that the permits aren't properly uh, received by not Michael Longyear and the contractors that he's gotten to do the building. And that may right require the Arthur Hayes family to tear down the buildings. And uh, I've also heard uh, from different people that want me to, to put on the air that um, the taxes on that estate and the taxes on the buildings that they're selling and the taxes on the homes that they're selling, those taxes might not be up to date. And then I was in Kirkland the other day and I was at the Kirkland Heritage Center and they're open two times a week. And they're open on Wednesday from like two to six and they're open on Monday from like eight to one and I was asked to look into the old log cabin that was in Kirkland uh, along the waterfront and it used to be used for a medical center. And apparently there was a living trust involved with that log cabin. It was a historic log cabin. It was a medical office. It was existing in 2012. And then there were some land use issues that got done and the whole side of the road got changed with the new land use of 2013. And that building got demolished with a few other buildings. And the Heritage Building is still there. But most of the other buildings that were on that street have been uh, removed and new buildings have been put in. So I have a client, a person who called up, and they also want to know about what was the status of that log cabin. It was a landmark, it was a heritage landmark. It was there for the longest time and it was the oldest log cabin in Kirkland, but yet it got torn down during that new uh, land, years, land use memorandum that they did. And right now there's another land use situation happening uh, for the other side of the street. And I had another person call me up to find out uh, what other buildings on the other side of the street are going to be affected by it. And so from time to time, people call me up about all sorts of things. Right now, the topic is uh, devil drugs, land use, uh, historic buildings. Um, basically, people aren't interested in the city council or the mayor's office. They're kind of interested in the grassroots, what's happening now. And so I'd like you to call me up if you have a question or a comment, or if you want to sit right over there at that chair and be on my show. You know, I would love to interview you. I'd love to have people come in when I'm in here. Sometimes I'm in here on Wednesday and sometimes I'm in here on Thursday. So if you call me at 206-854-0375, which is me, sorry, it's me. I can make an arrangement for you to come down to this TV station and talk about your case. Now, I've been talking to a lot of people about UFOs and the UFO group that meets uh, in Port Townsend once a month, at the end of the month. I think they meet at the last, the third Saturday of the month. And that's quite fascinating. And there's UFO seminars that happen and um, Coast to Coast is always doing things on uh, UFOs. And so there's different people that call me from time to time on different topics. Uh, my show is called Public Interest Issue Show. And I'm over here at the TV studio and I'm just trying to put my show on the air and I really can't think of what to put it on the air about today. I'm, I'm interested in the fact that I left my office this morning and as I walked downtown, one block away from my office, I asked this guy who was leaning against a post, he was kind of out of it. I asked him, can I film you and ask you about drugs? And he said, yes, you can film me. And I filmed him and he talked to me as much as he could about his experience living on the streets in downtown Seattle and how hard it is for him. And then he ate a hot dog. And so, you know, he was surviving. And then these other people walked by who had a dog and they were homeless too. And they didn't want to be on camera. So I respected that, that they didn't want to be on camera. But they also told me that everybody knows about devil drugs and how it kills you. You can take it once 
It's made by people just anywhere. There's no regulation on it. It's totally some uh, pre-cocted thing that people just kind of make wherever they are. And uh, the guy that was walking by, walking his dog said that everybody knows about uh, devil drugs, you know, and, and that's why I did my little film on devil drugs. It's shame the devil, kiss the world. That's my new film. And it's about devil drugs. It's about, you know, you, you take them and then you turn into a zombie. You never come back. Your mind just freezes. And so I would like some people on the air that can tell me more about the drug activity. Um, I know that the DEA used to have an office in downtown Seattle in the parking garage of US Bank on the second floor. And then they used to go out of the building through the alley instead of through First Avenue. And I know that when they used to investigate drug activity on First Avenue, because uh, somebody would put the drugs in the planter boxes and then the DEA would put cameras all over to see who that was. Um, I want to talk to you. I want to talk to whoever you are that wants to give me an interesting story to have on the air. Now, I'm sorry that this story today wasn't that interesting because, you know, I really don't have anything to say because you guys haven't called me this week. The only person that called me this week was a cake store in Kent that just opened and they had their grand opening and I went in there and ate a cupcake. But I, I want to do stories on really interesting things. So I want to talk to you and I appreciate it a lot. And uh, thank you for listening. Thanks for watching my show. You could have your show in here. This is Seattle Community Media TV. This is the studio. This is where the shows happen. And we could talk to you. Now I wanna find out information about Justice Charles Wiggins. If you have been in his courtroom and you think that something was a little odd about the case that you were involved in, I would like to have your story on the air. Now, my experience with Justice Wiggins is that he was involved in a case where they were fictitious tax returns and he pushed that the performa tax returns would be paid for uh, tax, tax on tax, tax on tax, which is fraud. And I brought it to his attention that his uh, recommendations were fraud and uh, he didn't do anything about it except for they threatened me. And so then in the Court of Appeals, uh, my case went up to the Washington State Supreme Court and Justice Wiggins was on the bench at that time. And I requested that Justice Wiggins not be involved in the case that I had before the Supreme Court of Washington because he had a conflict of interest and he was the one that declined the case. Now, Mr. Wiggins is not above the law and he's a sitting judge. And I think that it's a travesty that he is on different committees He's on like a budget committee and he's on like a research committee and he's on different committees. And I, I am very alarmed at this. And I'm, I'm very alarmed that there is absolutely no uh, backup investigation source to investigate uh, improper judicial conduct like Nancy Bradburn Johnson. She's a court commissioner down in King County Court, and she held a hearing when the courthouse was closed because it was snowing outside and all the courthouse was closed. The, the King County sheriffs always have to be there because the judge's mailroom on the second floor is open. So the, the sheriffs downstairs told me, well, the courthouse is closed. I said, well, I'm just going up to the mailroom. Goes, okay, you can do it. I went up to the mailroom. I went to the Nancy Bradburn Johnson's courtroom. It was locked. So I knew that there should be no hearings happening. And then I come to find out that Jennifer Baharsky, who is an attorney with the Washington State Attorney General's office and Nancy Bradburn Johnson, who is a commissioner, held a hearing when the courthouse was closed. 
Now, I both think they have an obligation to report that to the Judicial Board and the Washington State Bar and the US, Washington State Supreme Court about that improper behavior. And I care about it because I care about legal ethics. But Nancy Bradburn Johnson has absolutely no business holding hearings when the courthouse is closed. And Jennifer Paharsky, she used to be a U.S. attorney, and now she works with the Attorney General's office in Washington, in, in Olympia. They have no business holding hearings while the courthouse is closed. These are the kind of things that people call me about and I investigate. Those two things I knew myself and I put in a document with the court and the court still allowed Dan Smirkin to be the guardian of Robert Hamlin. So that case is very improper and I would like somebody to investigate it, but probably nobody will. But there's a lot of guardianship cases happening and there's a lot of judicial misconduct happening and Nancy Bradburn Johnson should be investigated and she should lose uh, her seat on the bench and she should be investigated for this. I think it's not just improper, I think it's illegal conduct. And Jennifer Poharsky, she should be investigating for having that meeting when the courthouse is closed. So thank you very much. Uh, Dan Smirkin diverted Avis Hamlin's mail. He just put in requests at all these financial institutions for Avis and Robert Hamlin's mail to be forwarded to Olympia. Well, Avis doesn't live in Olympia. So when the mail got forwarded to Olympia for five years, her mail got diverted. And Dan Smirkin is still getting mail down there. And isn't that mail fraud or tampering or, or identity theft or some type of illegal conversion? But nobody seems to care. And Michael Longyear, he's charged over $500,000 in legal fees to Michael Longyear has charged that to Arthur Hayes. And Michael Longyear is the, the guardian of the estate and he's the member and the manager of Hayes LLC. So those are the kind of things that people call me about. And those are the kind of things I don't want to just tell you about. I want you to sit right there and tell me. Thank you very much. And I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to Marty Oakley, PPJ Gazette, because she's doing